the fourteenth year of Chinjua. Chapter 115 Another Admirer The job was unexpectedly smooth going, because whenever Tang Fan and the rest dragged a corpse away and burned it, those remaining didn't try to block them, just watched numbly and motionless. They didn't even have the strength to stand up, even though their own relatives were amongst the bodies. After finishing all of this, Tang Fan and Lu Lingzi took off the cloth wraps on their hands and masks on their faces, burned them, then followed the others back to the city. After checking over their names and identities, the soldiers let them back into the city, and gave each person 30 coins of payment. Once they left the city gate and confirmed that no one had noticed them, the two left from an alley and headed straight for the city's south, where Chen Luan had brought Tang Fan for a look yesterday. Even though all of his conjectures had already been confirmed with what he had personally seen and experienced, he still had to make this trip. As expected, when they approached the monastery, yesterday's neatly organized charity hall was emptied out. Even the straw mats and blankets that had been laid on the ground were completely gone, to say nothing of the supposedly refugees. That alleged proper settlement of the refugees had been a sham from beginning to end, a sham made for the imperial ambassador sent by the court. No matter how cunning Chen Luan was, Tang Fan had still found his faint clues, and got to see the truth that he wanted. In this moment, however, instead of having any elation in his heart, what he actually felt was with sky-soaring fury. His usual warm and elegant smile had completely gone from his face. He quietly watched the empty, not too far away charity hall, neither joy nor anger was distinguishable on him but anyone that got close enough would be able to sense a cold and intimidating aura coming off from him. Lu Lingzi had had no clue that the ever approachable Tang Fan could give such a chilling look. Right when he thought to say something, the other turned and walked away. He was startled, hurrying to catch up. Brother Tang, we're now. Going back to Wu, Tang Fan answered abruptly. It was natural that they had to go back. They had come here disguised like this precisely to not draw anyone's attention. Even though they had uncovered the truth, what use was there in running off to Chen Luan now? Even if Chen Luan confess on the spot, he could still later renege on his confession in a memorial. Furthermore, with how sly he was, he would definitely not confess outright and because there was no way that Tang Fan could drag the emperor himself to come see all of this, it was similarly impossible for him to show him what he had seen. And, between him and the emperor, there was a partition of thousands of mountains and bodies of water, as well as many human affairs and variables. Thus, Tang Fan needed to find evidence, in the form of either people or objects. That would be difficult, of course. On the road back, he didn't say a word, thinking of this the whole time as his mind raced. When they returned to Wu, Lu Lingzi noticed that the corners of his mouth were still drawn back, giving him a slightly icy look. Brother Tang, how about I return to the capital and report this to Eunuch Hui, and have him think of something of a way forward, he tried to suggest helpfully. He's a favorite of his majesty and has his deep confidence. Maybe he'll believe him. Tang Fan's lips drew up, showing a curve that couldn't count as a smile. At first look, it seemed a bit mocking but it wasn't directed at Hawaiian. That won't work. Even if I spend half a month illustrating what I saw for the emperor to see, the outcome would not be within our control. Lu Lingzi was astonished. Why? Someone will block it, Tang Fan answered coldly. Even if Eunuch Hawaii personally gives a full account for us, it would have no use. Lu Lingzi couldn't understand. He regarded Hawaiian's position and innate importance as too high and heavy, having no idea that there were occasions where he had no power. Hawaiian is just one person. He could talk to his majesty once or twice at best but what about his opponents? Chen Luan's uncle is the Nanjing Minister of Revenue, and his department controls nearly half of the Great Ming's taxed grains, as well as issuance of salt permits. Do you think that the Wan group would allow someone that's at odds with them to sit in such a position? Chen Luan has no scruples because he's not only supported by his uncle but knows that even if I expose him, 
nothing may end up happening. Also, Wu Zong and Zhang Pei didn't hesitate to warn me before reaching Suzhou that they're keeping their eyes on me is that merely because of the gifts Jiangnan merchants have given to the Eastern Depot. Shang Ming is not happy to help other people to this extent. There has to be involvements and connections to the Eastern Depot within this. With so many people speaking in unison before His Majesty, do you believe that he'll listen to them or to Huayan alone? Sentence after sentence, he questioned Lu Lingzi into speechlessness. It was currently the end of spring and the start of summer. The warm breeze was gentle yet his body was full of cold sweat. He stared at Tang Fan in a daze. For some reason, his nose suddenly ached a little, and he quickly bowed his head, blinking away the soreness in his eyes. He had once faced off against dozens of mountain bandits alone in a perilous situation and had not felt much from his injuries then but now that he was seeing Tang Fan's profile, an indescribable melancholy arose from the bottom of his heart. All he wanted to do was cry his eyes out. For Tang Fan, and for his difficult path. Lu Lingzi had never known that being a good official and wanting to do a good thing would be so difficult. He was quiet for a long while, then asked, then, are we still investigating? Yes, Tang Fan answered automatically. Why wouldn't we? Lu Lingzi furrowed his brows. Could we even fight against them? Tang Fan smiled. We haven't tried yet. How would we know? Within such banal words, there was a fighting spirit that could move the soul. Affected by his smile, Lu Lingzi suddenly sighed. Brother Tang, I finally understand why Eunuch Hawaii had me come find you. Tang Fan turned his head, as if able to see what the other was thinking. Yuking, you could choose to be a wealthy gentleman or you could choose to travel the land, becoming a hermit that cares not for the mundane world. However, if you later walk into bureaucracy, I hope that you don't choose the paths of Chen Luan, Yang Ji, or Hu Wenzhou. Lu Lingzi cupped his hands solemnly. I will definitely not fail your expectations. He had believed that Hawaiian had sent him to Tang Fan in a wish for him to help protect him using his skills. Later on, he had further felt that in all the scheming and running about at Tang Fan's side, he really had been a great help to him. However, he hadn't truly understood Hawaiian's intent up until now it was not only for him to help Tang Fan but more so for him to learn from Tang Fan. Learn from others, learn from other places. Tang Fan must also know as much yet he had never pointed it out, instead allowing him to go everywhere. This made Lu Lingzi feel a little humbled but in addition to that, there faintly arose an unspeakable admiration. The man before him had no martial arts skill, nor any strong backers but he did have a resolute mind that no one could compete with. Were he to accept the 10,000 tales and help cover up the disaster, he wouldn't need to do anything other than portray in a memorial that everything was fine. No one would cause trouble for him, and those refugees jumping up to reproach him would be even less likely. Yet he had still chosen the most difficult route. Lu Lingzi inhaled, his morale reignited because of Tang Fan's words. Where do we investigate from now? No matter how strong a fortress is, it will have cracks. There is no such thing as genuine invincibility, it simply depends upon whether we're willing to discover those cracks. In this case, someone that tied the bell up just needed to untie it. Lu Lingzi creased his brow and thought for a time. Chen Luan was a definite no, as he was strongly supported and dared to lie to Tang Fan's face despite only being a 7th rank county magistrate, not placing importance onto him at all. Yang Ji had helped Chen Luan give Tang Fan money, so he was obviously smoke from the same geyser. That only left. Hu Wenzhou. Tang Fan nodded. But didn't he avoid seeing you? That's because he has no idea that he's been sacrificed, Tang Fan answered mildly. He acted dumb because he didn't want to offend Chen Luan. Now that Chen Luan and Yang Ji are going to push him out to be the scapegoat, will he keep sitting still? The sky had brightened, the amount of people watching the outside of the post house gradually increasing. It was impossible for them to stealthily slip back in using their original method, 
so Tang Fan simply kept wearing his coarse clothes and conical hat, then openly entered the main gate with Lu Lingzi. They were stopped by the gate guard. Tang Fan removed his hat, his counterpart could still recognize him, stammering out, S sir. It was not only him, but the spies watching the outside of the post house were greatly shocked. No one knew how Tang Fan and Lu Lingzi had managed to sneak out from right under their noses, nor where they had come back from. Tang Fan grinned at the post house soldier. It's me. What's wrong? Can I not go in? The soldier quickly moved out of the way. No, no, no. If you please. Seeing the two entered, the guard scratched his head, wondering to himself what that was all about. Did the other have some kind of strange hobby that wasn't appropriate for a proper official to have, so he wandered out in the clothes of the common folk. If he could be an official, he would wear his official's robes all his life, not even talking them off in sleep. Back at the post house, Qian Saner came over to report. Sir, Yang Ji still hasn't woken up, and neither Zhang Pei nor Wu Zong have left. What about Hu Wenzhou? Did he come? Tang Fan asked. No. Tang Fan laughed coldly on the inside. That Hu Wenzhou had no idea that he was on the brink of death. He spoke no nonsense. Help me change my clothes, I need to go on a trip. You haven't slept all night? Where are you going? Can't you do it after you rest? Qian Saner quickly asked. Tang Fan shook his head. It's too late. Time is of the essence. Those people will definitely report to Chen Luan that we went out and they might do something to Hu Wenzhou. I want to win him over as quickly as possible. Using the hot water Qian Saner brought over, he washed the makeup off from his face, restored his original looks, switched into normal clothes then headed out. Lu Lingzi had already come to recognize Tang Fan's tireless look when it came to proper business. Sighing inwardly, he hurriedly followed after him. The two found the prefectural bureau. It was daybreak, and today was an off day, so Hu Wenzhou was still sleeping in the rear hall of the bureau. Tang Fan didn't wait for anyone to make a report, directly bringing out his imperial ambassador's token, breaking in with Lu Lingzi's protection, and going straight for the rear hall. Hu Wenzhou was sound asleep, until a woman's shriek unexpectedly came from beside him. In his haze, it sounded a little familiar to him, as if it were his concubine's voice. His eyelids twitched, striving to open a crack, and he saw that someone appeared to be standing beside his bed. He had no idea what idiot would come to disturb his slumber. Even before his eyes were fully opened, he dimly rebuked, who dares barge in here? Get out. You really live a comfortable life, Magistrate Hu. Even this Tang feels inferior, the other party mocked him, rather than get scared away. That voice. Hu Wenzhou felt it to be inexplicably familiar. That was, until his concubine yelled out in ashamed anger. You pervert. Didn't you hear what he said? Get out. Hu Wenzhou was annoyed, crawling up from the bed. Once he got a good look at who was in front though, he completely woke up. See Sensor Tang. He looked flustered, anger and embarrassment mixing together. How can you burst in here without the owner's consent? Tang Fan said nothing, only looking at him calmly, until Hu Wenzhou avoided his line of sight out of guilt. A minute later, he finally remembered that his rank was equal to the other man and he didn't need to be so fearful. Tang Fan's hands were behind his back. I came to save your life, Magistrate Hu. The latter was struck dumb. Please don't exaggerate Censor Tang. What is this nonsense about my life being in danger? Tang Fan laughed with an unclear meaning. Drag everyone unrelated out of here. That sentence was for Lu Lingzi and it received a thorough implementation. He dragged the concubine with messy clothes off from the bed, then pushed her out the door. During this entire process, Hu Wenzhou could only shout ineffective stuff like, What are you two trying to do? What are you actually trying to do? Lu Lingzi seemed to hear none of it and after finishing,
he conscientiously shut the room's door, then stood guard beside it. No one would be getting in before Tang Fan came out. All right, it's finally quiet. Now we can sit down and talk business. Tang Fan sat down in a grandmaster chair. Talk what business? Hu Wenzhou wasn't even in clothes, how could he talk business? He viciously mocked the other in his heart, naturally not having any nice expression on. Anyone who had been sleeping pleasantly, then been barged in on and disturbed would also likely not look any better. I'm not sure what you wish to talk about, Censor Tang, he asked coldly. I was ordered to come down south to inspect Wu Jiang's famine from last year. As Su Zhou's magistrate, you've hidden away, not only not reporting to me but also making a lot of oversights. If I submit the truth to the court, what effect do you think that will have? Hu Wenzhou was unmoved. This magistrate already allocated the provisions in a timely manner. Anything else is the responsibility of Wu Jiang's magistrate. Why not go and ask him? His attitude of deflecting responsibility was quite common but since Yang Ji and Chen Luan were working together to do him in, it looked rather moronic. Tang Fan laughed. I already inspected Wu Jiang yesterday. Do you know what Magistrate Chen said to me? Hu Wenzhou didn't answer. Not minding, Tang Fan took it upon himself to continue. He first brought me to see the city's charity hall. He set it up nicely, with all the refugees properly settled in. The only less than perfect thing was that there were only three days worth of provisions left and the county granary was already emptied. He didn't ignore this, planning to get grains from wealthy merchants to help the refugees overcome this difficulty but he did tell me that the reason why provisions weren't enough is that Suzhou Prefecture only allocated 30 shi to Wujiang. Hu Wenzhou's eyes instantly widened. Tang Fan's line of sight imperceptibly passed over his face. You don't believe me? I also didn't believe him but he showed me his grain registry, which clearly had 30 shi on it. He also said that if you hadn't given such a tiny amount, disaster relief would have been enough. Nonsense. Hu Wenzhou couldn't hold back anymore, slapping a table and standing up with a bang. If the other hadn't said so, he would have had no idea how death would come to him. Censor Tang, 30 shi isn't even enough for the annual salary of an unranked official. How could I have done such a thing? The provision Su Zhou allocated was clearly 3,000 shi. He had the grains registry to prove it. What do you have? Tang Fan countered indifferently. I have a grains registry too, the other raged. Whenever provisions are moved, it always gets recorded. Where is it? Come and follow me. Hu Wenzhou loudly called. Magistrate Hu, the weather is warm but it seems to be a little indecorous to meet guests while wearing only inner robes, doesn't it? Tang Fan kindly reminded him. Hu Wenzhou then realized that he hadn't put on clothes, angrily and abashedly putting on an outer robe, shoes, and socks, cursing out Tang Fan and Chen Lu in an unknown amount of times in his head. A servant came in from outside. You were looking for this lowly one, master. Get Auditor Liao to bring the grains registry over. The servant agreed and left. Calling someone required some time. Taking advantage of this interval, Tang Fan asked, after returning to Wu, I secretly went back in disguise and discovered many refugees outside of the city's west side. Their clothes were threadbare and they looked like the living dead. Starving victims were everywhere, plague was rampant. You ought to know what's going on there. This humble official has no idea what you're talking about, sir, who Wenzhou refused to admit. Tang Fan did not get angry. If you don't speak now, I might not be willing to listen when you want to speak later. Hu Wenzhou still did not say anything. The room was immediately immersed in an abnormal silence. A short time later, Auditor Liao hurried over. Mr. Magistrate. He looked at Tang Fan. He had been present when Hu Wenzhou had led the welcoming committee, so he recognized him. Greetings, Censor Tang. Tang Fan nodded slightly saying nothing but who Wenzhou couldn't hold back. 
Where's the registry? Did you bring it? I did, but there's a lot of them and I left them outside. Did you want to look? Cut the nonsense. This magistrate asked you if you have the registry where what was allocated to Wujiang was recorded? Yes, yes. You want to read that section? Go find it, now. Please wait a minute, sirs. This humble official will go get it. He had transported all of the year's registries over with a cart. They were sorted according to time and region, so it was easy to find things. Not much time was needed for Auditor Liao to find the registry who Wenzhou demanded. This is the registry for Wujiang last year. Please look it over, sir. He flipped to one of the pages, then offered it up to Hu Wenzhou. The latter nearly snatched the booklet. His eyes hurriedly swept it from top to bottom, then suddenly froze. What? Eyes. All. This. He looked up in shock and fury, his gaze nearly swallowed Auditor Liao alive. The other had no idea, so he leaned over to see, apprehensive. Sir, I don't know what the issue is here. It was clearly 3,000 Shi. Why did it change into 30 Shi? Hu Wenzhou roared. Where did the rest of the 2,970 Shi go? Did you eat them? Huh. Auditor Liao trembled. You've accused me wrongly, sir. You clearly ordered for 30 Shi to be allocated. Where did 3,000 Shi come from? The other nearly lost it. Suzhou Prefecture's granary had a total of 5,000 Shi last year in provisions. After allocating 3,000, 2,000 is left. If it was 30 Shi, then the granary will have more than 4,000 left. This magistrate will go take a look now. If there isn't more than 4,000 Shi in there, you can wait for your black hat to leave along with your head. Auditor Liao looked at him like he was looking at a nutcase. Did you remember it wrong, sir? Suzhou's granary had 10,530 shi last year. Amongst that, the 10,500 was handed over to Nanjing, then to the court. The remaining 30 shi was given to Wujiang. The granary currently has nothing in it. Where did 2,000 shi come from? Hu Wenzhou glared at him, chest heaving non-stop. I'm going to see for myself. Also, bring the grain registry with you. Auditor Liao brought them to the prefectural granary, ordering someone to open its main door. The instant it was, Hu Wenzhou pushed the crowd away like he was mad, rushing in. Every wall was bare, not even a single grain of rice on the floor. It really was an empty granary. Hu Wenzhou bellowed, then snatched the grains registry that Auditor Liao passed over. Sure enough, what was written on it was exactly what the other had claimed before. He stared blankly. He wasn't thinking at all that he was going insane, or that his memory was wrong. Chen Luan. Chen Luan. Chen Luan. That name was madly circulating his mind, nearly devouring him whole. He slowly raised his head, staring at Auditor Liao maliciously. That dark look in his eyes made the other subconsciously take a few steps back. Liao Xiao Chang, you sure are great. Hu Wenzhou spat out each word from his mouth with deep rancor. His eyes were shot red, as if he was about to throw himself at him and take him down with him. Auditor Liao forced out a smile. This humble official has no idea what you're talking about, sir. Tang Fan wanted to laugh hearing that. Not too long ago, Hu Wenzhou had used that sentence to cut him off, and now someone else had gone down the same road of doing it to him. Karma really did go around. And he really did laugh out loud. That laugh seemed to suddenly affect Hu Wenzhou. He did a full body jolt, coming back to his senses, looking at Tang Fan with an urgency and hope he had never had before. Brother Runking, can we discuss this somewhere private? He was quite anxious but Tang Fan was not. Hands behind his back, he answered leisurely, discuss what? What else do we need to discuss? Don't you not know what I'm talking about? Hu Wenzhou's face flashed green and white. 
I failed to recognize Mount Tai before me. Please don't stoop to my level, brother, I really do have a hundred thousand urgent matters to report to you. Please give me just a short moment of your time. Tang Fan pretended to think it over. Eyes sweeping over Auditor Liao, who was looking all over the place with an uneasy expression, he gave Lu Lingzi a look. Understanding him, Lu Lingzi went right behind Auditor Liao, and squeezed him at his nape at lightning speed. The other immediately collapsed, limp. Lu Lingzi cried out in alarm. What happened to you, sir? Is the granary's airflow so bad that you passed out? This lowly one will help you to bed. With that, not waiting for anyone to stop him, he picked the man up and walked up, unsure of where exactly to bring him. Hu Wenzeo quit losing it at last, reacting with a shout at his confidants. Come and get this place under control. Everyone is to be taken out of here. Finishing with that, he turned to Tang Fan, looking faintly pleading. Sir. Tang Fan finally nodded a bit. The two returned to the rear hall of the bureau. The area was the same as before, the people were the same as before, yet the mood was not the same as before. Were it to be said that Tang Fan had wanted to pry open Hu Wenzeo's mouth prior to this, the current situation was now a complete reverse from earlier. Tang Fan didn't give him much time to revise his thoughts. Speak. I don't have much patience. Hu Wenzeo was quiet for a moment, then took a deep breath. All of this is Chen Luan's idea. End chapter. The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua Chapter 116 Those Two Bastards When the famine happened last year, Wu and Wujiang counties were both devastated by Lake Tai overflowing. At the start, we at Suzhou wanted to allocate a thousand Xi of provisions, then leave the remaining two thousand for Wu but Chen Luan told me that he hoped that I could allocate three thousand Xi to Wujiang. He could help me pacify the refugees in Wu and in that way, all of them would be congregated in Wujiang. As for Wu, it wouldn't receive any impact, and that would be beneficial for my reputation. Tang Fan raised a brow. You believed that he would kindly help resolve your issue for no real reason. Hu Wenzeo smiled bitterly. Of course I didn't, but his uncle is the Nanjing's Minister of Revenue. You can't look at just the monk's face but also the Buddha's. I anticipated that he might embezzle grains to sell to merchants and make staggering profits, but I never expected that he would be so unreasonable as to not even leave a small amount of grains for the refugees. He even collaborated with Yang Ji to push all the responsibility onto me. Brother Runking, you have to pull me up instead of get led around by the nose. That isn't right, is it? Tang Fan suddenly asked. The other was caught off guard. What isn't right? Tang Fan leaned back in his chair. From a night of no sleep, his energy was a little lacking and voice a little hoarse but his expression was still relaxed. Brother Hu, we are open people that don't speak in secret words. You just shouted your throat raw about being innocent and indignant you, as Su Zhou's magistrate, had someone changed 3,000 Xi out for 30 Xi right under your nose, yet you didn't notice at all. Tell me, should I believe that? If you were in my place, you won't likely believe it yourself, right? At this point, Chen Luan and Yang Ji want to shove you out to be their meat shield. You only have two roads you can pick between, the first is that you can work with me, and the second is that you can continue to say nonsense with your eyes wide open, where I only need to stand by and watch with my hands in my sleeves while those two shove all sorts of blame onto you. No matter what, it would be someone else's problem, and the one with the bleak end would definitely not be me. Hu Wenzeo's expression was unsightly. His lips were opening and closing, as if he wanted to argue but ultimately couldn't say anything. All he could do was sit there dejectedly, even hunching over a bit more than typical, the desolate aura of being at a dead end coming off of his whole body. Tang Fan didn't have the least bit of sympathy, though. The day this man had said nothing was the day he should have expected to be cast away like a pawn. When in bureaucracy, 
one couldn't solely think about getting promoted and getting rich. They should also be ready to lose their posts, or even their heads. I said before to just say what you need to. I don't have that much patience. If you won't explain, I still have other channels for checking, Tang Fan said, then stood in preparation to leave. Wait. Hu Wenzeo quickly called out to him. I'll talk. I'll talk. Tang Fan turned to look at him. If I act as a witness and expose them, can you ensure that when Chen Luen's group is pulled off its horse, I'll be safe? Tang Fan loathed his behavior of still trying to bargain while on the brink of death but for the sake of the situation at large, he had to say, of course. You likely don't know that the youth with me was sent to help me by Eunuch Hawaii, who was by his majesty's side. Hu Wenzeo was slightly moved. You mean to say, that his majesty already knows about this? Correct, Mr. Tang lied with a straight face. I've already sent report of Chen Luan and Yang Ji obeying no law and deceiving the monarch. Now, I just need to gather up more evidence. If you are willing to abandon the darkness to turn towards the light, I will plead on your behalf in the future, and ask that the court punish you lightly. You might not be able to continue being Su Zhou's magistrate but your life and assets can at least be safeguarded. If it goes a little better, you might even be able to continue being an official. Hu Wenzeo eyes shone. Tang Fan's words had touched the bottom of his heart. To tell the truth, this, he gulped, speaking with some difficulty. Has some further inside information to it. Tang Fan raised a brow. Be more clear. Su Zhou really did allocate 3,000 Shi to Wu Jiang while Chen Luan secretly changed it to 30 I knew of this. At the time, he used his uncle's name to pressure, threaten, and tempt me, saying that if I keep quiet and feign ignorance, I'd get a 30% cut of the profits gained from the 3,000 Shi. If I refused to obey, Yang Ji would denounce me in regards to ineffectual disaster relief. I had no choice but to bend to their tyranny. It doesn't end there. We all knew that the court would send an imperial ambassador this year to investigate how the disaster was going, and that Yang Ji might not be able to circumvent him. That's why the two put on a joint show of denouncing each other, which had three goals. First was to clear them of responsibility, the second was to demonstrate their respective stances to the court, thus creating the false image that they weren't cooperating, and the third was to laudably portray their complaints to the court. When the time was right, as long as the imperial ambassador could be duped, this would be over, and everything would be fine. Since you've said that, when the court had you all submit statements, did you already know this inside story? Hu Wenzeo nodded. Yes. Chen Luan said that I only need to remain silent and claim that I didn't know. Once the imperial ambassador came, he would deal with it, and I wouldn't need to bother with anything else. Tang Fan chuckled. Now I'm here, yet they lied, shoving all the blame onto you. Hu Wenzeo gritted his teeth. If I had known before that they would do something like this, why would I ever play deaf and dumb? What's going on with the 5,000 she you said was in the granary, then? After those 3,000 she were given to Chen Luan, there genuinely was 2,000 she left. I can honestly swear that I'm not lying. But, as you also saw, there was not a single grain of rice left in there. The only possibility is that when Chen Luan requested 3,000 she, he actually pulled all 5,000 clean out. Because I didn't want to cause trouble, I turned a blind eye to it, not even coming to the scene to check things myself, and they just exploited that. They even tampered with the grains registry. There's no evidence at all now. I. I. They sold government grain to merchants. Yes. Because of the famine, food prices rose quickly. They sold the government grain at high prices, making enormous profits off from it, and only a small portion was used for disaster relief. Beneath Tang Fan's lightly weary expression was a hidden coldness not easy to detect. And you knew all this well but you sat and watched on the sidelines while the refugees died of starvation and the plague. Chen Luan told me that he would properly settle them, 
and had me move Wu's refugees to the outside of Wujiang city I didn't know that he would treat them like that. Hu Wenzhou quibbled. Tang Fan didn't want to get hung more up on this issue with him. You said that all of this was Chen Luan's doing. Is there proof of that? If there was no proof, the chamber pot would end up upended over Hu Wenzhou's head. In order to get rid of the unjust blame and ease his crime, Hu Wenzhou was going to have to wring his brain juices dry to think. Chen Luan's profits from selling the provisions were divided up to me using Mokang notated bank notes. They total to about 2,000 tails. Could that be used as evidence? Tang Fan shook his head. The bank notes can't speak by themselves, as who knows where you got them from. At best, they could be used as auxiliary evidence. Keep thinking. Hu Wenzhou was so dejected, it was hard to speak. He had to think of other things. The emperor up in the heaven didn't betray people's hopes, as he actually did come up with something. Chen Luan would definitely have a grains registry with the correct number recorded but I don't know where he's hiding it. If we can get our hands on that registry, that would be proof. Tang Fan nodded. That would be the most direct and effective proof but the issue with that is that your own registry was tampered with by Auditor Liao. It's likely that only Chen Luan himself knows where such an important record is hidden. How would it be found? Hu Wenzhou was dispirited. This won't do, that won't do, what would you have me do? How would I know what to do? Tang Fan said with a smile, not taking responsibility. You're the one that's in trouble, not me. If you want to save yourself, you need to think of a solution, though I do have a word of advice for you. Please say it, Hu Wenzhou said, restraining his annoyance. Since they've already thrown you out, they certainly won't pick you back up. You're still of two minds, holding on to the notion that you can have one foot in each boat. You're cooperating with me here, yet you're still capitulating to Chen Luan there. If there isn't even enough left of you for a burial when the time comes, don't blame me for not warning you ahead of time. Getting his thoughts seen through, Hu Wenzhou's face was scorching hot, and he forced out a smile. You think too little of me, Brother Runking. I definitely am not like that. When all was said and done, he still hadn't decided upon completely falling out with Chen Luan nor did he believe that Tang Fan would be able to defeat the others. As the common saying went, a strong dragon would find difficulty crushing a snake in its own turf and beyond that, Chen Luan was not really a native snake anymore but a native dragon. Tang Fan stood. It would be best if you weren't. Your life is your own if you don't value yourself, no one else can help you. Hu Wenzhou finally got scared. Brother, wait. Tang Fan stopped in his tracks. You're right. There's no taking back an arrow let loose from its bow, the other said, dejected. Now that I've told you everything, that pretty much counts as a witness account. Chen Luan will never let me off. I'm afraid that I could meet an accident at any time. Could you find a martial expert to protect me? Why, you decided to work with me at last. Are you not afraid that I can't beat Chen Luan? Tang Fan teasingly countered. Hu Wenzhou smiled painfully. They all sold me out. If I still held on to hope for them, would I not be irredeemably stupid? Seeing that he was speaking from the heart, Tang Fan nodded. That's good. Wait a bit, I'll find someone when I get back. Hu Wenzhou became so frightened, he straight up grabbed onto his clothes and wouldn't let him leave. What will I do when you leave? If you go out, they'll silence me on your heels. Then what'll happen? Tang Fan wasn't sure how to react. Only now did this man knew to be afraid, how had he not been gotten rid of sooner? If you don't let me go, how can I find someone to protect you? Besides, no matter how quick Chen Luan reacts, he is still in Wujiang. It would be impossible for him to get the news straight away. No matter what was said, Hu Wenzhou refused to let him go. Then I'll leave with you. Wherever you go, I'll go. That will only alert them further, Tang Fan scolded. 
I don't want you to die more than anyone else, so put yourself at ease. I, Tang Runking, have never said anything that I couldn't fulfill before. You're a stately fourth rank magistrate, too why feign being such a wimp? How scandalous! The other was scolded by this official who was younger than him and of the same rank until he was worn down and unable to speak, only able to let go of his clothes out of embarrassment. He now looked like a wronged little wife, which was worlds different from how he had been before. Tang Fan had no choice but to give him some words of comfort before he brought Lu Lingzi away. The latter had heard a bit from standing outside the door and he asked, Brother Tang, why didn't you leave me to protect him? With me there, that would guarantee that no one would get the idea to attack him. Tang Fan shook his head. I have something more important for you to do. Hu Wenzhou's knowledge isn't much and there wouldn't be a huge difference whether Chen Luan silences him or not, so it's unlikely that he would do anything like that. Still, for the sake of keeping him calm, I'll ask someone else to defend him using you would be like killing a chicken with a cow cleaver. Lu Lingzi felt a sweetness in his heart when he said that, and was unable to keep from smiling. However, a burst of clamor came from ahead a couple of dandies were harassing a maiden on the street. He gave them a careful look, then gasped. Isn't that the woman that fell into the river outside of Yangzhou City? It hadn't been clear that one night but now that she was seen during the day, the woman's beauty was even more striking she was practically so gorgeous, she could overturn a city. In addition to that, she was only accompanied by one maid and was wearing no veil, so it was no wonder that she had attracted lechers. Lu Lingzi was responsible for Tang Fan's safety and he didn't want to be too nosy. Seeing that someone else was already stepping up to fight this injustice, he thought to take Tang Fan on a detour. However, Tang Fan said, go on and save her. Lu Lingzi was caught off guard. Um. Seeing injustice on one's travels warrants the drawing of a blade to help. What happened to your heart of chivalry? But someone is already helping out and those lechers aren't too tough to deal with. In any case, the authorities will come soon. A woman's reputation is heavier than Mount Tai and will be damaged if she's saved a little too late. Furthermore, we rescued her once before, and meeting another time is simply fate. Go on and help her. Lu Lingzi was a little displeased but couldn't argue. He was forced to step up and beat the lechers away. The pretty woman clearly recognized Tang Fan and him, not only gratefully thanking Lu Lingzi over and over again but also coming over to thank Tang Fan herself. Thank you for your help, benefactors. You previously denied me getting onto your ship to thank you yet we've met again today. I really cannot repay your grace in saving me twice, she said respectfully. Why don't you bring a few more people out with you? Tang Fan asked. You won't be able to escape by luck every time. This lowly woman's parents passed early on and my family has fallen. I had been planning to seek shelter with family in Suzhou but since the famine from last year, my relatives have all been wiped out, not even one to be found, she answered sadly. I had to find somewhere to settle down in before anything else, and because my funds are shamefully low, I couldn't afford to keep many servants, and had to let a few people go. Now, I only have this maid left. A house with a leak in its roof will encounter several nights of rain, your circumstances are truly lamentable, Tang Fan said, quite sympathetic. Tears filled her lashes but she held back and didn't let them fall, instead turning her head, as if she didn't want him to see her sorry state. However, she had no idea that such a lovey pose could be all the more pitiable and was able to incite a man's protective instinct. No matter how much of a nobleman Tang Fan was, he still fell within the category of male. Dare I ask your good name, miss? She bowed. My surname is Xiao, and given name the lone character Wu. As refreshingly beautiful and divinely charming as the frail and slender woman was, she ought to have been valued and favored by being hidden away in a cushy home, not coming out to suffer the wind and rain. Have you been able to find somewhere to live now? Miss Yao. She bit her lip, shaking her head. Rent here is too expensive. 
Now, I... I'm... Her voice became quieter and quieter, until she ultimately said nothing. Tang Fan wouldn't make her expose her difficulties, of course. If you have no place, you can stay in the post house for the time being, then find other accommodations as you see fit. Xiao Wu raised her head, staring blankly at Tang Fan. There was a look of both grateful and conflicted in her eyes. Obviously, her self-esteem was wreaking havoc and she didn't want to accept others' help but her current situation was truly bad, putting her in a hard spot. Tang Fan didn't push. Prior to this, he had been rushing to the post house, but was now patiently waiting for her answer. Brother Tang, wouldn't having her there be inappropriate? Lu Lingzi had to ask, his volume not too loud but just enough for Xiao Wu to hear. The woman flushed with embarrassment, immediately giving a bow with her hands overlapped in front of her, turning, and going to leave. In a rush, Tang Fan reached out and grabbed the hem of her clothes. Wait, Miss Xiao. This little brother of mine is young and speaks tactlessly. He wasn't actually aiming at you. It's just that there are others at the post house, which are those other two that were on the boat with me that day, whom you've seen before. My brother feared impinging upon you, is all. He wasn't being malicious. Please don't think much on it. She bowed her head, wanting to take back her clothes but he was holding on tightly. Her face slowly turned red but it was not much like the embarrassed red of before. I, I wasn't thinking as much, but I don't want to cause you all further trouble. He beamed. There's no trouble, not a bit of it. Since it's our second time meeting, this is fate. To you, these have been great favors, but to us, they've taken no more effort than the lift of a hand. Please don't reject this. What effort? You've clearly been entranced by beauty, Lu Lingzi mumbled in his head. No matter how pretty Xiao Wu's looks were, they had turned into a disaster in his eyes. Still, as Tang Fan was insisting that she stay, he couldn't say anything more to prevent this, else he would be reducing Tang Fan's standing. Seeing that Tang Fan's intentions were sincere and also being quite at a loss herself, Xiao Wu finally agreed to his proposal. This one has bothered you for days, sir. This great kindness is something worthy of grateful tears. I don't know what to say. Tang Fan smiled. Then you don't have to say anything. This interlude was fairly long. By the time Tang Fan's group returned to the post house in the city, it was nearly noon. Qian Sanur was waiting at the main gate, looking this way and that, face full of anger added with deep worry. The instant Tang Fan returned, he quickly stepped forth to report. Sir, you're finally back. Zhang Pei and Wu Zong, those two bastards. Tang Fan waved his hand, stopping him from continuing. Being clever, Qian Sanur immediately noticed that this was the wrong place to speak in, quickly shutting up. Yuking, take Miss Xiao and her maid to settle in first, Tang Fan said to Lu Lingzi. Xiao Wu didn't question much, merely thanking him repeatedly, then leaving with Lu Lingzi. Despite this, all along the way, her alarming beauty had long been attracting attention. Even Qian Sanur was distracted for a very long time before he could react, staring at her back and stuttering, S sir, does that lady know you? On the night Tang Fan had helped Xiao Wu, Qian Sanur had been in the city, busy buying stuff and was not around then. This was the first time he had seen her face, and was shocked by it. In the wake of Xiao Wu's footsteps, many burning gazes landed upon her, but a government post house was just that, after all. Even if the woman was a top-notch beauty, her safety could be ensured. However, were Tang Fan's group to return to the capital one day, a frail woman like her really would incite much coveting, and her looks would often earn her misfortune. Tang Fan turned Qian Sanur's head around. Come with me to the room. Qian Sanur seemed to have just woken up from a dream. Tang Fan had since strode towards his own little courtyard, going so quick, he was nearly uncatchable, totally unlike someone that had been running around for the whole day and whole night. Back in the room, 
Tang Fan didn't care to freshen up, immediately asking, what happened? While you were out, Suzhou's Merchant Society sent someone to deliver a gift. I refused to accept it, of course but those two bastards, Zhang Pei and Wu Zong, still accepted it in your name. Qian Saner answered angrily. I kept a firm watch on the courtyard to stop them from carrying that stuff in, so they left it outside and left afterwards. I can already tell that this was meant to pour foul water on you. After hearing this, Tang Fan didn't get angry, instead looking deeply thoughtful. Sir. Qian Saner was anxious. Where is the gift now? Just outside the courtyard. It's a small box and pretty heavy. Qian Saner answered hurriedly. Go carry it in. Huh. Tang Fan was annoyed. Why are you being dumb? Go get a move on. Qian Saner was anxious, fearing that his own brain was having a momentary lapse in function. But they've caused a set fact that you've accepted a bribe. If you bring it in, that's just, just. Tang Fan smiled. Does you putting it in the courtyard mean I'm not accepting a bribe? Go pick the box up. You can do it by yourself, can't you? I can. Then do it. Without choice, Qian Saner could only jog away, then move the box in. There's a key but it's pressed under the box. I brought them in together. Do you? Open it, Tang Fan ordered. The second the box was opened, Qian Saner's mud eyes were nearly blinded. He sucked in a breath. Th this. The inside was packed with gold ingots, the gap stuffed with fingertip-sized pearls. Ingots aside, the pearls were also each around the same size smooth, round, clear, exquisite, and desirable. Qian Saner had once traveled all around, even going for the tomb of a Song Emperor, so how could he not tell the value of these objects? He wasn't the slightest bit happy though, because the greater the gift from the other party was, the more trouble Tang Fan was signified to be in. Sir, he said anxiously. What do you we do now? You can't actually want to keep. Yep. Why wouldn't I? Tang Fan answered with a smile. It's like getting a pillow handed to me when I want to sleep. If I take such a huge amount of money, I won't have any worries for the rest of my life. Qian Saner mouth was open wide. He looked at Tang Fan like he had gone mad. Tang Fan ignored him, simply reaching out to touch the ingots, then pick them up and examine them, as if drunk on the gold color filling his eyes. Meanwhile, Qian Saner was pulling his hair out. It was not out of the ordinary for great Ming officials to accept gifts from merchants. On the contrary, it was almost normal. It was to the point that many big merchant notations had court officials backing and speaking out for them, which had even become a thing of mutual, implicit understanding. Such a thing happening with Tang Fan made one feel odd no matter how they looked at it, though. When Tang Fan slowly showed a smile while viewing the ingots, Qian Saner finally couldn't help himself. Sir. You need to listen very carefully to what I say next. Tang Fan interrupted. Qian Saner expression went harsh. Uncaring about what had just happened, he subconsciously straightened out his back. Please instruct, sir. Tang Fan took off the identification token from his waist, as well as a stack of silver bank notes, and set them on the table. Take the box and these bank notes away. The other was surprised. Take them where? Bring the token to John Kinhu of the Jinyue Suzhou's post, and have him take haste in taking all these things back to the capital and gave them to Wang Ji. Sir, can John Kinhu be trusted? Tang Fan nodded. Yes, he's on Guangzhuan's side. I'll have Yu King go to the capital with him. Based on his connection to Huayan, that'll be another channel. I'll set out immediately. Do you have any other orders, sir? Tang Fan thought a bit. Wait a moment. There were pre-prepared brushes, ink, inkstones, and paper in the room, with the ink not even needing to be ground. He sat down, spread out a paper specifically used for writing's memorials, and, after a bout of thinking, 
immediately wrote a memorial up. Qian Sanu watching from the side, Agape. He hadn't been able to read many characters once, but after helping out in Tang Yu's store, he had gradually learned more. However, there was no way that he would be able to so breezily write memorials of literary flourish like Tang Fan could. This caused his admiration for Tang Fan to reach another level, for no other reason than that he didn't know that these were the basic survival skills needed for great Ming officials. Many typically used the ghost writing of aides, but that didn't mean that they couldn't write themselves. It wasn't long until the memorial was written. Tang Fan waited for the ink on it to dry, then folded it up and handed it to Qian Sanur. Put the memorial and banknotes in the box. Have them all given to Wang Ji. He'll know what to do. Qian Sanur hesitated. Sir, Lu Lingzi's skills are much stronger than mine. If he's not here, who will protect you? If those two bastards, Zheng Pei and Wu Zong, swindled their way in, I'm afraid I won't be able to hold them back. Tang Fan stretched his back, smiling carelessly. It will be fine. If you lot are around, how will I get close to the beauty? Qian Sanur was dumbstruck. A good minute later, he suddenly babbled, then, then what about Commander Sui? Take the stuff and get out. Got it? Lu Lingzi soon returned. Once he heard Qian Sanur's explanation, he swiftly objected. That won't do, Brother Tang. You've set your heart on going against Chen Luan, so what if he jumps the wall like a desperate dog and does something to you? That's why I'm having you go to the Jin Yiwei for help, Tang Fan replied. Tell them to send two, no four people here. Two will stay by my side, and two will help protect Hu Wenzhou, so as to prevent him from being scared stiff all day long. Lu Lingzi still wanted to speak but Tang Fan waved to stop him. Yuking, this is very important. These valuables aren't the most crucial evidence, but only with them will His Majesty believe my words more. I have to stay here and continue to look for Chen Luan's grains registry, so going to the capital will be entrusted to you. You and Sanur must hand over the objects and memorial to Wang Ji or Huayan. Not wanting to leave Tang Fan at all, Yet pressured by his feelings of righteousness, Lu Lingzi couldn't say anything and could merely stay silent. Tang Fan patted him on the shoulder. All right, don't get fussy, he said softly. You're a county honorate, so how come you're acting like a child? I'm not a child. Lu Lingzi refuted. Sure, 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 you're not. Tang Fan laughed. Sanur is loyal but his skills are lacking, and you're familiar with Hawaiian. You must have a way to see him in person. This is something you have to do. If things go smoothly, the next time we meet, it will be in the capital. Lu Lingzi gritted his teeth. I'll give these things to Hawaiian as soon as possible, then come back and look for you. Saying so, he turned and left, forgetting to even say goodbye. And you said you don't have a child's temper, Tang Fan thought, exasperated. Chen Luan's methods were inexhaustible. First, he had collaborated with Yang Ji to put on an act that deceived the court, then brought Tang Fan to see a false scene, then gave him 10,000 tails, then sent money using the name of the Merchants Association, even getting the Eastern Depot's people participating in it. Had Tang Fan been a little weaker-willed, he might have compromised by now, no longer wanting to spend energy messing with this thankless work anymore. With one thought towards the refugees outside of the city though, he didn't end up changing his mind. Only by completely toppling Chen Luan could those outside the city be properly settled down, and could latecomers be warned to prevent similar things from happening in the future. After Lu Lingzi and Qian Sanur left, Tang Fan finally felt exhausted from staying up all night. Not bothering to change his clothes, he collapsed right onto the bed, falling into a deep sleep in no time at all, aware of nothing anymore. When he awoke again, it was due to the sound of knocking coming from the door, and a woman's inquiring voice. Is anyone in there? Lashes trembling slightly, he slowly opened his eyes, mind still a little sluggish. 
the chaos was not fully waking him up. This was. Sir Tang, are you in there, the person outside asked again. He huffed, rubbing his head as he sat up. Is that you, Miss Xiao? It is. What's wrong? I'm bringing you a nighttime snack. Hearing the words nighttime snack, Tang Fan raised his head to look out the window, then discovering that it was completely dark out. He had wanted to say that Jian Saner should have done this but then he remembered that he had sent Jian Saner and Lu Lingzi away, their figures gone from sight. He also had no idea if they had found the Jin Yiwei like he had asked, thinking of such as he got out of bed. Wait a moment, Miss Yao. I'll get dressed first. All right, she answered softly. After a short moment, he was dressed up neatly. Please come in. Xiao Wu pushed the door open and entered. Tang Fan saw that she was carrying a food tray that looked to have some weight to it, yet had stood for such a long time outside holding it without complaint. He got up and took it from her. You've worked hard, miss. There was no need for you to bring it yourself, there's workers here. She smiled lightly. It's no problem. The workers have post house chores to do, while I'm idling around. You can just send me on any task you have, sir. She lifted the lid of the stewing pot. The aroma of chicken soup subsequently came upon the senses, and by its side was a bowl of white rice and a small dish of green vegetable dish. It could not be more appetizing. Were this the past, Tang Fan would definitely have begun to chow this down but now, despite how his stomach was already starting to growl, he remained unmoving, only staring at her solidly, as if he had a thousand things to say, yet have no idea where to start. Beneath such a gaze, a snow person would melt, to say nothing of the very alive person that Xiao Wu was. Her face slowly reddened, head also bowing slightly, revealing the fair and beautiful neck beneath her collar. The room's atmosphere gradually turned warm and ambiguous. And at right that moment, a knocking came from the door again. Having a good thing interrupted, Tang Fan was a little annoyed. Who is it? Sir, this subordinate was sent by John Kinhu of the Jin Yiwei Suzhou post to protect you, a rough voice sounded outside. Xiao Wu seemed to snap out of that weird mood, face getting ever redder than before. Tang Fan was unhappy but said to the one outside, wait out there, then turned to Xiao Wu with a pleasant look on his face. Why is there only one bowl of rice? Did you already eat, Miss Xiao? She bashfully looked down. I did. Please eat soon, sir. He nodded, appreciated the beauty's timid look, then reluctantly took his gaze back, picked up a spoonful of the chicken soup and was about to put it into his mouth. Right before the spoon reached it, he stopped. I suddenly remembered something important. Xiao Wu gave him a confused look. Did you not put anything in the soup? He asked with a smile. Like arsenic, crow's head, or thorn apple, for example. She stared blankly at him. Sir, what are you saying? I don't understand. Another disrupting knock came from the door. Tang Fan smiled warmly at Xiao Wu. Then I'll trouble you with doing one thing. Please state it. All of a sudden, he reached out, then pulled her right into his arms. Following her tiny exclamation, the door was pushed open from the outside. End chapter